Yeah, good morning everyone. So uh, we have finished our lecture series on retinoids. Last week we discussed colchicin. So I thought that I would start uh, covering some topics from basics of dermatology. You, one needs to have a good hold and good understanding about the basics of the skin structure and functioning. If you know the basics, if your basics is clear, you would have a good strong foundation, okay? Now that foundation is absolutely essential for us to develop a good understanding regarding the pathomechanism of various diseases. For example, we must know how a basement zone is created, is, is formed in the skin, so that we can understand how each and every pathology or autoimmunity, uh, auto, auto, uh, let's say autoantibodies, what happens when these autoantibodies are going to destroy a certain protein molecule in the basement membrane zone, okay? Uh, I, since uh, I, I would be a bit busy next month regarding some personal commitments, so I thought I'll take some basic dermatology topics and discuss them. Maybe make a like half an hour video or something regarding this. Maybe even this video will be extremely short because we'll be discussing only part one of it. We need to develop a good understanding of this membrane zone. That is why I divided into this uh, into three parts. Part one would be desmosomes. Part two would be hemidesmosomes and lamina lucida. And part three would be lamina densa and the part of the papillary dermis, which is the dermoepidermal junction. So if we understand the placement of each and every protein that forms this basement membrane zone, we'll be able to understand what happens in individual pathologies in which these proteins are going to get destroyed. Okay. Now, if we know the, the location of these protein molecules, we can uh, we can guess where the split would be in autoimmune bullous disorders or acquired bullous disorders okay if the protein which is impacted by the disease process is superficial let's say in the stratum corneum granulosum spinosum then the split would be you know intraepidermal a bit upper side like we see in pemphigus fallaceus if the protein which is impacted is at the lower level at the basal level then we have the split at, at, at the suprabasal level, that like we see in pemphigus. If the protein is impacted in the lamina lucida or lamina uh, densa or at the dermoepidermal level, then we will see the split at these certain levels, for example, in bullous pemphigoid or dermatitis herpetiformis. Okay? So we need to understand where the protein is present so that when it is impacted, we can easily guess the level of split. And if we know the function of that protein, we will also be able to easily guess how the disease is going to progress. And we will also learn the histopathology or dermatopathology of individual vesicobullous disorders. So to have a good understanding, we will now discuss how a basement membrane zone is created so that we can then further venture into bullous disorders acquired or autoimmune based. Okay. Basement membrane zone individually is a very important topic for uh, from basis of dermatology. It, ne it, it needs to be studied in uh, quite a bit of detail for our exams. Okay. Now, uh, it, it, it uh, comes as a short note in itself as a, right, a short note on basement membrane zone. You can also get a short note on dermoepidermal junction in which you have to mention basement membrane zone. You can also get a short note on desmosomes. You can get a short note on lamina lucida densa interactions. Okay, so we need to know how how, we, how the how the structure is created so that we can go forward and look at what happens when the pathology is targeting each and individual unit. Okay, so uh, without much further ado, let's start our uh, this week's discussion on basement membrane zone. Now, this is the definition of basement membrane zone. So if you want to write an answer, begin with this. Basement membrane zone is a highly specialized structure with numerous macromolecules which acts as an interface between the epidermis and dermis of the skin. Okay, so just excuse me if I'm sweating a lot. I have to switch off the fan so that I can record the audio. So just let it slide. So you have the epidermis and then the dermis. Okay, this is the dermis, this is the epidermis. The interface, the interaction between these two layers is what is basement membrane zone. Okay, so it's a highly specialized structure, has a lot of macromolecules and it acts as an interface between the epidermis and dermis. That is why in disorders which have lichenoid infiltrate are also known as interface dermatitis. 
Why? Because dermatitis, that is inflammation of the skin, is happening at the level of the interface. So it becomes an interface dermatitis. If you remember your biopsy reports of lichen planus, you will find lichenoid band like infiltrate at the dermal vitamin junction. So this is what we mean by basement membrane zone. Okay, let's move forward. So this uh, person is George F. Odland. And he was the first one to describe basement membrane zone in about, I, if I remember correctly, 1958. Okay. Now, basement membrane zone has a very, uh, they have a, a multitude of functions and we'll go through one by one. It acts as a substrate for attachment of cells. That means it acts as a base on which the cells are going to rest and attach. It acts as a template for tissue repair. That means when skin is damaged, the repair starts from the basement membrane. So if you remember your biopsy slides of regenerating pemphigus, you will see that the layers which are at the lower end, let's say at the level of stratum basal, do these layers start to get regenerated and the upper layers are removed or necrosed away. Okay. So regeneration and repair happens from the basement membrane level. Okay. Matrices for cell migration. What do we mean by that? That means when cell is going to migrate from dermis to epidermis, it crosses the basement membrane zone. And it acts as a scaffold or as a structure which is used by these cells to migrate from the dermis to the epidermis. Okay. Selective permeability barrier because as we have discussed in the last slide, it is made up of numerous macromolecules. So they can restrict or allow the movement of molecules from the dermis to the epidermis. Fifth is cell migration, differentiation, morphogenesis and apoptosis. The contact of the cell, so let, let's just take one cell. Let's say this is basement membrane, basement membrane zone, and this is one cell resting on it. This attachment is very important for the cell to survive, okay? If the attachment is lost, the cell becomes a cantholytic cell, okay? And when this attachment is lost, the cell will not receive its surviving signals and will eventually die. So it is very important. This attachment becomes very important it's because basement membrane zone is sending a lot of signals to the cell to, to keep it alive. So when this attachment is lost, those signals are lost and the cell is going to die. Okay, cell is going to undergo apoptosis. So these are the functions and the most important function is it is good. It is an important topic for the exam. This is the most important function for students. Okay, let's move forward. Mm. A basement membrane zone consists of majorly or largely four zones. One, the zone one is basal keratinocytes. So here you can see the zone one. These are the basal keratinocytes or keratinocytes of the stratum basal layer. Here we will see desmosomes. Now desmosomes are cell to cell connections. Let me just change the pen color. Here you will see a desmosome. Here you will see a desmosome. And these are the areas where the cell is attached to its neighbors okay so this whole structure is a desmosome clear we'll, we'll of course uh, learn about them in subsequent slides when we go to the base layer we have the hemi desmosomes okay hemi hemi means half and desmosomes why because if two cells are getting connected then this is a desmosome but what happens when the basal layer is connected? There is no cell underneath the cell. Okay, so only half of the structure is present, and this is known as hemidesmosomes. But remember, initially it was considered that hemidesmosome is just as a half part of a desmosome, but it is not like that. It is just the name. Okay. So hemidesmosomes is made up of entirely different structures, but it is just present at the basal level. So from here, let me just change the pen color. From here to here, we have the basal keratinocytes. From here to here, we have lamina lucida, which is lucid, that is transparent. Here we have the lamina densa. Densa means it is dense, so it's more or less opaque or translucent. Okay, so that's how you differentiate between these two laminae. So this becomes the zone 2, lamina lucida. The zone 3 becomes lamina densa. And the fourth are the anchoring filaments which are present in the dermis. Or to be accurately correct, papillary dermis. So that's how the zones are made. You have basal keratinocytes, you have lamina lucida, lamina densa, and then you have the anchoring filaments. So these are all anchoring filaments. 
these are all anchoring filaments okay let's move forward so here we can see the four zones we have one one zone second third and fourth and here are the major major proteins so basal keratinocytes have majorly five protein okay this will gradually change into one and ten as the cell moves upward from the basal layer to the corneal layer okay now what are keratins how they are formed how they are organized are part of the process known as keratinization and this is another important topic for residents. We'll discuss this, this in detail, in quite detail when we'll be discussing ectosiform disorders. But right now we'll focus more on the basement membrane zone. So creatine 514 is there. Then you have the BPAG, which is uh, bullous pemphigoid antigen 1 and 2, plectin, integrin, alpha 6B4. Laminin is there in lamina densa. Sublamina densa is the zone 4 of anchoring filament. Here you have type 4 collagen, sorry, type 7 collagen with anchoring filaments. Anchoring filaments. Okay, so these are the major sub major constituents of each individual zone. And whenever there will be a, a, a destruction of these proteins, the split will occur. And depending on what protein is affected, it will decide the level of split. Let's move forward. So today we are going to focus our discussion on desmosomes, which are the adhesion molecules which binds two cells together on their lateral walls and on their up wall. Okay, below you have hemidesmosomes and I am talking about the basal cell layer. As we move upwards, the cell is attached to its this neighbors by desmosome. Let me tell you what I mean. Let's say this is the basement membrane zone. Okay, and here are the basal cell layer. So basal cell layer will be attached to each other by desmosomes. Okay. As the cell goes upward, proliferates and grows upward, the desmosomes will be present all over, wherever the cell is attaching itself to its neighbors. So these are desmosomes. Okay. What happens when the desmosomes are lost? If desmosomes is are lost, the cell will turn into a spherical shape. And this is what we call it as acantholytic cells. Now in acantholytic cells, you also find some kind of nuclear enlargement. Okay, the NC ratio is increased. Why this happens, we'll discuss when we're discussing desmosomes. I'll tell you the answer. Let's say, let me just get rid of this diagram and I'll tell you. Let's say, uh, let's say we talk about intraepidermal inflammation. So what happens when there is fluid in between the cells? So what happens is that let's say, let me just draw and explain it to you. Let's say some kind of inflammation occurs and in between the cells, now you have fluid. So the cells don't have much space to expand, they get shrunken down. And when they get shrunken down, they are still attached using desmosomes, they are still attached to their neighbors. And when these are attached to their neighbors, they look like they are having spinous processes. Okay, so, so when there is intraepidermal edema, the cells do not have this form of normal architecture, they shrunken down, but they are still connected to the neighbors with desmosomes. So these arms will appear like spinous processes. Okay. So they will look like star shaped. Okay. Let's move forward. So here we can see a ultra structure of desmosome in electron microscopy picture. And this is this, this is one cell. This is another cell. These are the inner desmosomal membrane. This is constituted by a lot of different molecules. We'll discuss them later. And this in between, this is the interest, intracellular space, space between two cells. And these are all keratin filaments. Keratin 514. Okay. If we are talking about the basal cell layer, so 514. These are cuboidal, so I'll make sure that looks like it looks like a basal cell. Now, this these keratin filaments are present in the entire cytoplasm of the cell. And they are attached to the desmosomes. Okay. And this keratin filament, since they are present in the entire cytoplasm, they reach up to the nucleus. So when we used to draw a cell, remember when we used to draw a cell like this, 
This entire cytoplasm is not empty, it's filled with keratin filaments. And this keratin filaments act as a stuffing of the cell so that the cell doesn't damage its architecture, its shape. And there are certain attachments at the level of cellular membrane which are essential to maintain the shape of the cell and these attachments are the places where desmosomes and other connecting proteins like connexins, cadherins are all attached. Desmosomes is one of them. Okay. So that is how there is a connection between cell membrane to the nucleus via the keratin filaments. Clear? Let's move forward. Now uh, let's discuss desmosomes. I'll get rid of these diagrams and then we can move forward. Okay. Now desmosomes are also known as macula adherents, which are adhering macules. They are the major cell adhesion junction of the epidermis. They anchor cell to cell. The intercellular space is known as desmoglia. Okay, desmo means from desmosomes. Desmosomes. Glia is Greek for glue. So desmosomes are those areas which stick together. Okay, it's a shortened form of desmosomal glue. So if so, you're using the glue to stick two cells together. Those are desmosomes, and the space between them is known as desmoglia. So initially, when people were looking at the cellular architecture, they thought that there is some kind of glue present in between the cells, which is holding them together, and they named the glue as desmoglia. But when we did further studies, we found that there's there's nothing in the space. The structure extends inside the cell in both the, both the cells, and it kind of knits them together okay it seals them together and those were named as desmosomes let's move forward so this is the ultra structure of desmosomes in a schematic representation okay so let's let's uh, go through one part of the uh, one part to the another and then we'll discuss what exactly how exactly is desmosome form okay so this is desmoglia which is the intercellular space this is the outer desmosomal proteins, inner desmosomal proteins, okay, or uh, sorry, plaque. The, these two proteins, the one in the purple and the one in green, these are the cadherin molecules, okay. And cadherin molecules are two types. You have desmoglene and you have desmocolin. Desmocolin are the purple ones, desmoglene are the green ones, okay. These molecules will cross from inside the cell to the intercellular space and attach to each other okay they need not be alternating but most of the time they are in, in a dimer form now if you have a cell and you have desmocolin and desmoglenes crossing it you need some attachment here also that attachment is filled by placoglobin and placophilin placoglobin is the pink one placophilin is the orange one okay so these are attached here these is uh, the plecoflin and plecoglobins are then attached to desmoplakin dp so here is the dp this coiled blue one is desmoplakin and this desmoplakin is attached to keratin filaments so if you always if you anytime want to create a structural desmosome in your exams you start with the intercellular space desmocolin and desmoglene crossing and attaching itself the other end is attached to the to plecoflin plecoglobin these two uh, mainly the plecoflin is attached to desmoplakin and desmoplakin, the uh, tail end is attached to the, uh, so the uh, attached to the keratin filaments, and this keratin filament will be present throughout the cytoplasm till the nuclear membrane. Clear? Let's move forward. We'll discuss each of them now uh, individually and easily. Now, desmosomal proteins. Let's start. Desmosomal cadherins are of two types: desmoglenes and desmocolins. The second layer is made by a placoglobin and placophilin. They are from the armadillo family of proteins. This could be a good quiz question. The third layer is made by plaquins, which are desmoplakin, envoplakin, periplakin. There is also another plaquin known as epiplakin. Okay, so these are plaquins. So here is the third layer, here is the second layer, and here is the first layer. Let's move forward. Okay. So, uh, des desmosomal cadherins. Again, repeating, desmoglin, desmocolin. These two are desmosomal cadherins. There are four desmoglin isoforms and three desmocolin isoforms. And these isoforms, you, you must have heard about desmoglin 1, desmoglin 3 in pemphigus and pemphigus group of disorders. So, these are where the isoforms come from. In epidermis, okay, superficially, you have desmoglin 1 and 4, majorly. As we go downwards, you see more expression of desmoglin 2 
desmoglin 3 desmocolin 2 and desmocolin 3 okay so if you if you see this you will find that one is present in the epidermis uh, superficial layer of the epidermis and as we go deeper there is more expression of 3 okay so this is what we are uh, showing here also as we move from stratum corneum to stratum granulosum to stratum spinosum to stratum basal the expression of desmoglin 1 decreases the expression of desmoglin 3 increases okay desmoglin 4 is only in the corneal layers majorly and the platoglobin desmoclacin these are present throughout the epidermis this decrease of desmoglin 1 and major expression of desmoglin 3 as we move downwards is the reason why pemphigus vulgaris has a suprabasal split okay while uh, while pemphigus foliaceus has an intraepidermal split higher up and why in perineoplastic pemphigus you have you can have you can have the entire epidermis involved okay now desmoglin uh, sorry desmoglin 3 now these are just for extra information desmoglin 3 is also implicated in SEC head and neck cancers desmoglin 2 are also present in cardiac myocytes there that is why in various acquired uh, not acquired various mutations of these proteins you have cardiomyopathy because these proteins are also present in the heart okay Desmocolin 1 is in skin and epithelia, desmocolin 3 is cardiac tissue. This is just for extra information. Just take one point from this slide that the expression of desmocolin 1 is decreased. Uh, not decreased per se, it's present nearly throughout the same concentration, but the level of desmocolin 3 is increased as we move to the basal layer. Okay, so in disorders like pemphigus foliaceus, when you have the antibodies against desmocolin 1 only, the split is at the upper level because that is where desmocolin 1 is taking care of all the attachment. In pemphigus vulgaris, where you have autoantibodies against 1 and 3 all, so you see the split from the suprabasal layer because 1 and 3 are both present at the basal layer. The major attachment is by 3. All of these two are, are uh, destroyed by pemphigus and the cells are separated from the basal layer. Okay, let's move forward. So in desmoglin 1, if there is a proteolytic cleavage, that means if any compound, any molecule cuts desmoglin 1, you have a split. This kind of disorder is seen in bullous empatico, staphylococcal skin scarlet syndrome and nethrin syndrome. Okay. If there are pathogenic autoantibodies, which is seen in pemphigus foliaceus, mucous membrane pemphigoid, perineoplastic pemphigoid, pemphigus, uh, IgA pemphigus. So these are the autoantibodies. If there are mutations because of haploinsufficiency, you have palmoplantar keratosis or keratoderma. Okay, so palmoplantar keratoderma. So if this mutation, that means the protein is not properly formed, you have PPK. If you have autoantibodies, that means antibodies which are destroying these proteins, you have pemphigus foliaceus, mucous membrane pemphigoid, perineoplastic pemphigus, Ig pemphigus. Okay, and if this cleavage, if something is destroying this this uh, uh, this protein, then you have disorders like bullous empatico, S4, Nesrin syndrome. Okay. Now remember that in disorders like pineoplastic pemphigus, desmoglin 1 is not the only antigen. There's a whole list of antigens in pineoplastic pemphigus. We are just saying that antigens were found against desmoglin 1 in pineoplastic pemphigus also. Okay. For example, in pemphigus foliaceus, you have the antibodies against desmoglin 1 only. While in pineoplastic pemphigus, you have antigens against a lot of proteins, including desmoglin 1. The same goes for mucous membrane pemphigoid, the same goes for IgA pemphigus, that you have all sorts of antibodies, also including desmoglin 1. Okay. Now we have discussed desmoglin and desmocolin. These are the desmoglin is the most important protein molecule in the uh, in the desmoglia portion of the desmosome. Let's discuss the second zone, the second layer, which is the inner desmosomal plaque which are formed by placoglobin and placophilin. Now, placoglobin and placo, or placophilin are in the catenin group of proteins, which are, which are from the armadillo gene family. Remember, in a few slides before, we said that it is, they are from the armadillo family of proteins, isn't it? Okay. They connect desmoglins and desmocolins and also e catherin e catherin is not important for us as, as dermatologists. We must remember that here in the diagram, you can see that desmocolin and desmoglin are connected to the desmoplakin through placoglobin and placophilin. Okay, the purple, the pink one is placoglobin and the orange one is placophilin. Okay, all they are present in all layers and the epithelia. 
they can localize to nucleus that means they are they can go and attach to the nuclear membrane also so they may modulate gene transcription that means they may have some role in regulating the gene expression if this mutation in placoglobin you have nexos disease okay nexos disease is an autosomal recessive form of disorder other disorders are lethal congenital epidermal bullosa epidermal acid bullosa we will we'll discuss all these disorders in some subsequent video in detail but you need to understand how a desmosome is created so that individual disorders make some sense to you the orange one is placophilin it can be present in plasma membrane as well as the nuclear membrane it functions at the desmosomes where it directly binds to desmoplakin so here we can see the this bind the binding of desmoplakin <coughs> Desmoplakin to desmocolin and desmoglin is mediated majorly through placophilin. Okay. Now, placophilin can also directly bind keratins, which increases the stability. Let's say here in desmoplakin, the keratin filaments are attaching to desmoplakin. Okay. But keratin filaments can attach to placophilin also. And this creates a good strong bond in the desmosome. So, further stability is increased. A good way to remember is placophilin, a molecule that likes placo. What is placo? Desmoplakin. Now you will remember what is the major attachment protein between uh, between uh, between uh, desmoplakin and desmocolin and desmoglin. You understand that? We'll revise them. Don't worry. The, there are basically three isoforms: placophilin one, two, and three. Placophilin one is present more in the basal layer more than the superficial epidermis that means more towards the lower layers mutation causes ectodermal dysplasia and skin fragility syndrome placophilin 2 mutation is present most uh, sorry placophilin 2 is present mostly mostly in the basal layer and the mutation causes autosomal dominant arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy so arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy Placophilin 3 is present in the whole epidermis. As of now, there is no mutation. So you need not remember. Just remember that there are three isoforms of placophilin 1, 2, and 3. One is more at the basal layer. Placophilin is only at the basal layer. And placophilin 3 is at the whole epidermis. Clear? Let's move forward. Now we enter the third part of desmosomes, the desmoplakin. Okay. Now, desmoplakin is responsible for attachment of desmosomes to the keratin filaments. This is the end point of a desmosome. Okay, that's how that's where the desmosomes uh, attaches itself to keratin filaments, and that is how it holds or glues two cells together. Okay, so there are two forms: desmoplakin one and two. The central part of desmoplakin molecules coil around each other to form a rod-like structure. Okay, so it, this this will be like a rod-like structure, and it has a head and a tail. Let's just make a schematic diagram like this. Okay. So this is <clears throat> this is desmoplakin. This is the rod-like structure. This is the head and this is the tail. The head binds to placoglobin, placoglobin, placophilin complex. The tail binds to keratin or the keratin filaments. Okay, so that is how the attachment happens. Mutations in desmoplakin causes PPK or the palmoplantar keratoderma, uh, which could be striated or the diffuse type, dilated cardiomyopathy. Remember, all these structures are there in the heart also. Woolly hair, hair and nail are part of skin. And of skin blisters can also happen. Why skin blisters? Because the desmosome is not properly formed because of the mutation and the cells are separating itself from these neighbors. Haploinsufficiency or a type of genetic mutation of desmoplakin leads to autosomal dominance striated PPK. Autosomal recessive mutations cause causes Carvajal syndrome. I think it is pronounced as Carvajal. If it is pronounced as Carvajal, let me know. So Carvajal syndrome. Carvajal syndrome has palmoplantar keratoderma, woolly hair, and left ventricular cardiomyopathy. Remember, last slide we heard about the autosomal dominant arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. Here it is left ventricular cardiomyopathy. So that's just a tidbit. If there's mutation in the tail region, you have lethal acantholytic epidermolysis bullosa. 
Auto antibodies against desmoglycan has also been found in perineoplastic pemphigus along with all sorts of antibodies against desmoglin 1, 3, envoplacan, periplacan, uh, epiplacan, uh, uh, placoglobin, placophilin. All the structures of desmosomes will have auto antibodies in perineoplastic pemphigus. They have been reported, okay? Maybe some more than the others, but they will still have, okay? Let's move forward. Other desmosomal proteins. Now, in other desmosomal proteins, you have envoplacan, epiplacan, periplacan. They are present in the superficial layers of the epidermis in the corneodesmosome. Now, what are corneodesmosomes? Corneodesmosomes is nothing. It's just a desmosomes present in the corneal layer. Remember, when the cell is migrates or proliferates from the basal layer to the upper layer, it gradually gets flattened, rids itself of all the organelles, become very hard cornified shell. When that happens, the attachment has to be more secure and more strong. So we change the name from desmosome to corneodesmosomes. Okay. And the proteins like envoplacan, epiplacan, periplacan, they have a more structural integral role to play when in corneodesmosomes. Other proteins are like corneodesmosin, which are also present in corneodesmosomes and the inner root sheet of hair follicle. And that is where the tight binding of the upper layers form. Okay. Autoantibodies against these molecules have been found in perineoplastic pemphigus. We have said that in the last slide. <coughs> Mutation in corneodesmosin has been uh, lead, has leads to autosomal dominant hypotrichosis simplex of the scalp. Just remember the disorders that corneo. This could be a good quiz question, a good MC question at the SR level in the exam. Corneodesmosin uh, mutation in corneodesmosin causes autosomal dominant hypotrichosis simplex of the scalp. Let's move forward. Okay. So now uh, we have discussed the structure of desmosome. We know how it forms. We will just revise. Okay. And I want anybody who is listening to this video to repeat after me so that the concept regarding how a desmosome forms are clear. If the concept is clear, we will know what happens when each of these proteins are targeted. So here we have two layers. These two layers are the cell, uh, the cell membranes of two different cells which are close to each other. Okay, I have just dilated the middle part so that we can see all these structures. <clears throat> this is the extracellular space and these two are the intercellular space. This is of the cellular space of cell 1 and this is of cell 2. So these, these are two different cells. Okay. The green one are desmoglenes. The red one is desmocolin. So I will just label it here. Desmocolin. Desmoglene. And these two proteins are going to crisscross in from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cells and attach to the other molecules of this neighboring cell and form a bond or form an attachment. Okay, like this. Okay, so this is the first part of desmosome. Then you have the placophilin or placoglobin. Any of them will be okay. And placophilin. These two will attach themselves, this complex will attach to the end points of desmocolin and desmoglin and become the second part of desmosome. Then you have the desmoplacan. Okay, so this purple one are desmoplacan. This is the head region. No, sorry, this is the uh, tail region and this is the head region. The head one attaches itself to placoglobin or placophilin complex and becomes the third part of desmosomes. And these are your keratin filaments. So now we understand how two cells attach themselves to each other. Desmocolin, desmoglin, pleco, uh, plecophilin, plecoglobin, desmoplacan, keratin filaments. Repeat after me. Desmoglin, desmocolin, plecophilin, plecoglobin, globin, and desmoplacan, keratin filaments. Clear? Now I've also mentioned that there are certain proteins like this. Like this and like this. These are epiplacan, periplacan, periplacan, and envoplacan. These proteins can attach directly to the keratin filaments and the cell membrane, or they can attach themselves to the periplacophilin placoglobin complex or desmoplacan complex to provide further structural integrity. Just remember that these three proteins have major role to play in stratum corneum when you have the formation of corneodesmosomes. Clear? Now you see the usage of these proteins which you mentioned earlier. But remember, a desmosome is just this structure. 
so now this is a this is just a, you could say a computerized diagram and these are your keratin filaments <clears throat> this is the inner desmosomal uh, plaque which is formed by placoglobin placophilin desmoplakin all of this are attached itself and the this part this part is the outer desmosomal plaque made by desmoglein and desmocolin okay and this is the electron microscope structure of desmosomes so you have the desmoglia you have the uh, inner desmosomal membrane you have the keratin filaments on the separate side from the adjacent cell you have the inner desmosomal protein membrane and the keratin filaments and this is another desmosome this is another desmosome this is another desmosome now you can see that two cells are attached to each other by multiple desmosomes you get my point so this ends the short video on desmosomes we need to understand the good uh, structure of basement membrane zone so uh, things will go a bit tougher as we move forward because desmosomes is the easiest part to understand so in half an hour we have learned the structure of desmosomes how they are formed and what happens when each and individual uh, each and individual proteins are targeted so now uh, for example and and how 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 does the understanding of desmosomes actually help in understanding bullous disorders i'll just give you an example in in pem figures we have learned that we see row of tombstones appearance okay like tombstones in a graveyard row of tombstones now why does that happen in pem figures well guys we have mutation against Des uh, desmoglein 3 and 1 okay that means desmosomes will be destroyed and i've told you that in the basal layer the desmosomes are responsible for attachment of these two cells the cell is attached to the basement membrane zone by a hemidesmosomes clear so what happens when all the attachment is lost but not the basal layer okay not the basal attachment because hemidesmosomes are still there okay so the cell will separate itself from the left right top front and back but not the floor and that is why you see the row of tombstones in Pemphigus vulgaris. Clear? In any disorder which targets desmoglein, only desmoglein, 3 and 1, you will see row of tombstones. In Pemphigus fallacious, when you have only one attachment, you see intraepidermal strength and more of a catalytic cells. Okay? In Bullis Pemphigus, you have the uh, destruction of the derma epidermal junction and you see this, the split between epidermis and dermis. Clear? So now we understand why we see the row of tombstones in biopsy of pemphigus vulgaris because the antibodies are against desmosomes and desmosomes is only present in the right, left, front, back, top of the basal layer, not the bottom, bottom as hemidesmosomes. This also tells us that hemidesmosomes have entirely different structure than desmosomes and we learn about hemidesmosomes in the second part of the series where we will study about hemidesmosomes and lamina lucida. So I'll see you again. I'll try to make I'll try to uh, make the video quicker so that we don't have to wait till Saturday for these shorter videos. But let's see how much time I have. Uh, thank you. Wait, I just finished. Any comments, any doubts, please mention the comment section. I answer the comments. I may be late, but I do answer them. If we if you send an email, I receive a lot of emails. They get they tend to get drawn. Just mention the comments so that other people can also learn. So that being said, adios, bye bye, and enjoy your weekend. Bye.